God, like that literally broke something in me as you play that. Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Hey guys, before we get into it, I want to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Colin Broom. Colin Broom is a high fiber dietary supplement that uses the highest quality ingredients to support your gut and microbiome health. Unfortunately, not everyone experiences the bliss of a good poop. And for most of you poor unfortunate souls, Colin Broom may be the answer. For example, if you're someone who suffers from diarrhea, the fiber in Colin Broom will help to solidify your bowel movements. Or on the flip side, if you're someone who's always constipated, it'll add bulk to your poops to help it move quicker along the digestive tract. I personally tend to eat a lot of fast food and snacks, mostly on account of I'm so booked and busy and on the road all the time, you know. I will spare you too many details. But in the past month or so of using Colin Broom, I've already noticed a significant change in my poops. Like I noticed a difference after just like a day or two. And so now thanks to Colin Broom, I can continue to eat hot garbage without the sense of impending doom. But assuming you guys are content with your poops, it can also help you for other reasons, such as bloating, or even just a good old fashioned colon cleanse. Because maybe for some reason or another, you want a cleaner colon. All you have to do is add a single scoop of their powder into a glass or cup of water each day, and their magical little powder will do all the rest. And it actually tastes good. I got like the strawberry flavor, and it literally tastes like a strawberry juice. Like it's it, it's actually good. So get your gut fixed today, because by using the link below, you can get up to 65% off a six month supply. And if you need a little extra push, you can use my coupon code MADDIE10 and take an extra 10% off the already existing deal. Again, you can find that link in the description. And with that, we move on to the video. Hi guys, welcome back to Give It To Me Straight. I'm your host, Maddie Morphosis, and if you're watching this, you are now officially a bimbo. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> because on the show today, we have the TikTok megastar and now pop icon, Chrissy Chapeka. Hello, everyone. Hello, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. I know, you You are now a, the, the first um, non-drag race guest to be on the show. That is like the, pivotal. You have to set the bar, you have to set the standard for everyone else. That's like insane, but like I'll get on Drag Race soon, guys. Like just don't worry about yeah, it. Like, her tape, her tape is in. It's Se in. Yeah, season Ru 16. Ru Ru and I have been texting actually, like it's been crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm glad Rue actually acknowledges somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, I mean, what can I say? Like, pretty mm -hmm. smart, bimbo. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You, you're the, yeah, you're, you're what she wanted sugar to be. That's important. <gasps> you. Oh, you can't say that. Yeah, I can say I that. I didn't say it, though. Sugar, I love you, and you know what you yeah. were in my music video, so. <laughs> <laughs> you're contractually obligated to to be kind. Contractually. Yeah. No, no, it, the love is real. The love comes from here, I swear. <laughs> and here. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm gonna stop and lose my place on these cards. Oh, live Circle your back. Truth. So there's gonna be a bunch of pauses and stuff. That's so, so fine, because Just... I don't know how you would do that any other way. No, like actual, like actual talk shows and like syndicated professional things where they know what they're doing. I don't know how they just, go through the whole interview. Drugs. Just talking, drugs. <laughs> What's well, I mean, going without losing like their spot and stuff oh, and like drugs. carrying a conversation. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, not, not the ones you're thinking of different drugs. Like, oh, okay. Just, yeah, you know, you yeah. get it if you get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The girls that get it, get, get it. it. And the girls that don't, don't oh. have grappling drug addiction. No, they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the name Shepeka is not the most common name. I don't, no. I don't know many like Shepekas out there. That's a, like, how does it, do you feel like a, a, like a, a weight on you being the most famous Chapeca? The weight of the world is on me because it's like I'm the most famous Chapeca in the world, mm -hmm. you know? Like, it's a lot of pressure. You have to um, be the representative. I'm the representation for the Chapecas, and mm -hmm. whether they like it or not, yeah. which what I'm saying is they don't, yeah. um, it's me. At the end of the day, like, yeah. it's always going to be me. Like a lot of people, whenever they get in the music industry, they're like, I'm going to change my name, do something like punchy or different, you know, right. something, but you're just like, no, my government name, that is my stage name. Right, no, literally. Well, it's honestly like, I was thinking of dropping the last name because it's so hard to say, but like, I keep it out of spite a little bit. And like, something about me is that like, I am a spiteful bitch mm -hmm. um, to a fault, like not really to a fault, but to a fault I am. Um, not a lot of people, maybe in the Shepeka family are very happy that, mm -hmm they're related to me and knowing that I was like I have to keep this forever yeah. so if they want me to change my name I won't but they can yeah <laughs> there's probably like some like ancestor 
from way back mm-hmm. that was like someone fighting for like women's suffrage or something that she's like a dad. She's like, hell yeah, we did it. There's like, like someone. someone. Yeah, there's a couple of people that are probably looking up or down, you know, proud of you. Definitely looking up. Like, I think like, the thing looking. is, like, I'm sure it's all looking up. I went to a psychic once, though, and they told me that my dog is, um, <laughs> what is it called? They're like a dead family member watching over me. And so I'm like, if my dog, Sugar, is proud of me, then, like, there is an ancestor somewhere that's like, hell yeah, bitch. Mm -hmm. Like, Even if it's just your dog, as long as somebody's looking out for you, someone's at your best interest at heart. Yeah, someone. Someone's rooting for you. It's like someone's rooting for me as I'm sobbing through this now. Yeah. (laughs) You're like, I don't don't need my family. I have my dog and, like, a bunch of kids on TikTok. And my pool. I'm golden. And and, and your Beverly Hills mansion. It's like, I'm good. (laughs) I'm golden. Yeah, no, exactly, because that's my life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. But I'm actually not the first Drag Race alum that you filmed any kind of content with because you just released your music video, Brat, a couple weeks ago with uh, Sugar and Spice. I did, yeah. Yeah. How did you link up with the twins? Were you just like run into each other in LA? Did they reach out to you or TikTok fame? I mean, it was TikTok. I've been mutuals with both of them for like, oh my God, like three years now. I think like right when I blew up um, was when that we had followed each other. So mm-hmm. we've been like internet friends for so long. So I got to see them like, you know, before Drag Race and just doing their thing online and absolutely like killing it. Like them and I like, and a couple other people like definitely started that whole like bimbo movement and like all embraced it. I was gonna say like the, with the timeline you're talking about, you get, y'all started at around the same time on TikToks when y'all both started to take off. Right yeah. when you were starting to do bimbo TikToks and whenever they were starting to jump into their shoes and have a different outfit, like, you know. Yeah. So it's like, y'all literally like were hitting your strides at around the same time and then just converged and, then, and now it's here. Yeah, I mean, cause I think at the end of the day, all three of us are bimbos. Like, I feel like a mixture of both of them in the mm-hmm. best way possible. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you're going through eras because you were very like bubble gum, very pink, it was very sugar. And now you're entering into more of a spice era. No, like you said, it's like I hung out with spice once and now I'm just like completely yeah. changed for the better. <laughs> yeah, it's like you just like shook her hand and then immediately you got like black highlights in your hair. No, like it, it just... was actually insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're great, I mean like they, the minute I I moved to LA because I just moved so recently like both of them just like took me under their wing and were like oh like we'll take care of you like we'll make sure you're like safe and like we'll make sure you have friends and mm-hmm. like you're not lonely which is like so fantastic to have like just coming to a new city and like being you know a little mm-hmm. a little nervous about where am yeah. I? Especially like LA, because I've, I've LA of all the cities I've been to, LA is probably the most like intimidating. It's just like yeah. so huge. There's so many people. I was like, how do people make it here? How do people meet people? Yeah, like one thing about me though is like I don't know anyone. Like like in the sense of like like someone can be like, do you know this celebrity? And I'm like, no. Mm. Like and I think that's kind of what makes LA a little easy because if you don't know anyone around you, they're just people, mm. and so it's like not as intimidating. Why, why are you so like? ignorant of pop culture in the world around you because I mean, I mean i'm sure your, your family is a little religious but they weren't like pentecostal no it's because i was a theater kid oh <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like you don't know like what's happening in pop culture but you know every song from hamilton front to back oh bitch of course yeah like sunday in the park with george mm. like come on let's get into curtains like it was it was kind of crazy i was so like my dream as a kid was like Broadway like I'm gonna be a star like I'm gonna that's where I'm gonna be in New York City and that was my like goal forever I worked Mm -hmm. towards it for like 18 19 years of my life and then uh, I went to school for it and I was like I hate this like this is the worst (laughs) thing I could have ever decided to do you're looking in the mirror you're like what have I become no literally it was when they were like I was singing oh what what song was I saying? I was singing some song for some class and they were like, think about your trauma, like get into it. And they're like screaming at me. And I was like, this you're, is uh, like you're, you're performing cats. You're like, what? <laughs> I was literally like performing Macavity and they're like, think about your sexual trauma. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> can I leave? Yeah. <laughs> like anyone who has gone through like musical theater school, like entirely, like the full four years, like mm-hmm. I, I praise you because I did a semester and I was like, get me the hell mm-hmm. out of here. You're broken individuals. Yeah, like, yeah. and like, uh, as a broken individual to another, like, good for you mm-hmm. because, like, you were stronger than I was. Yeah. <laughs> you either drop out or live long enough to see yourself. Oh my God. <laughs> off Broadway. See yourself. <laughs> like, literally. <Yeah>. Like. <laughs> as someone that wasn't, like, super ingrained into pop culture but is now in pop music, 
Do you feel like you're appropriating pop culture? Do you feel like you are invading the space of no. other pop divas? And well, no. Like the way you're coming at <laughs> No, because I think I'm just kind of doing it in my own way. Like, I do think I'm doing it in a way that is so, like, theatrical, mm -hmm. like, and so true to, like, 10-year-old, 12-year-old, 16-year-old me. Like, the way I've just, like, developed as a human being, especially, like, with the new stuff I'm recording, too. Like, it's just becoming... Like, there is a lot of inspiration from, like, all the pop divas, like, obviously, Christina, Britney, Slater, like, all these, like, women I really look up to. But like, I don't in a way feel like I'm copying anything because it's like I've built my brand the past three years. I know what I'm doing. Mm. I know my voice. I know what I'm capable of. So I'm just gonna do it. Damn. Yeah. So f you, by the way. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Some of vitriol. You're gonna be the first person outside of Drag Race and the last. I'll be like, these people. They don't. They don't know the vibe. They're attacking me in my own home. I'm so. You're supposed sorry. to just let me insult you, and you roll with it. You're oh to right. Show, roll over and show me your belly, like all the other drag queens. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They throw it back too, and I just edit it out. Right. <laughs> so for the people that the uninitiated, what in your words is a bimbo? Ooh, I mean, I think a bimbo for me is just such a celebration of femininity of my femininity of uh, how I walk through the world of you know a different type of intelligence that maybe isn't like what societal standards would like the bimbo or a person or a girl or whoever to be like just kind of like I don't know like the way I've lived my life for the past 23 years like that's a bimbo to me mm -hmm. in the most positive form and I you're always a bimbo I think I was always a bimbo like there were things I just didn't care about and things I really cared about. And I think the things I really cared about were things that people were like, why, why are you doing that? Why are you into that? Like, why, why is that something like you want to do with your life? Like dress the way I do, speak the way I do, like give advice the way I do, make music the way I do. This like, I think I've been told no so many times, but every single time I've always been like, eh, I'm going to do it anyway. Like, I don't really care. And it's like gotten me so far because of it, which is mm. phenomenal. I think people would look at me and be like, you're obviously doing what you're doing for men, like mm -hmm. the way you dress. But I think a lot of it has been kind of taking that power back from the man or from the male gaze in a way. Like I feel like I've just been sexualized so much in my life, like even as like a little kid, mm. um, without myself allowing it to be that way. Mm -hmm. Like I have been, through a lot at a very young age and like continued to be into my like early 20s up until I was able to almost like reclaim that power back mm -hmm. and decide to do it for myself. And so when I dress like this, like it's completely my decision. It's not mm -hmm. someone else's. It's not what someone yeah. else is looking for or what they want, if that kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like I think just a lot of like being a bimbo and like being how I am is just doing it like for me. Yeah. Something I got to take back. Yeah, I'd say bim being a bimbo isn't about male gratification. It's about yeah. like dressing for yourself, embracing the sexuality that was like thrust upon you in a sense. Absolutely, because it's just like there is so much art and like mm -hmm. beauty in sexuality that like doesn't have to be sexualized in that way for men mm -hmm. like, like celebrating myself celebrating my own femininity and my own sexuality for me like mm -hmm. no one else gets to touch that no one else gets to be in that bubble unless i allow them to mm -hmm. which like has taken a lot of strength and like power to be able to do that mm -hmm. and i'm happy to because now it's like i love wearing this and i love looking how i do and like knowing like it's for me and it's for me to look at myself in the Starbucks windows and be like, that mm -hmm. bitch is so hot. <laughs> yeah. But now you like it from the other side of the Starbucks glass, so. <laughs> no, right. Yeah. Like it's not <laughs> me in my little Starbucks uniform wishing I was the girl checking herself out. Like, yeah, like in the a window. girl that looked dressed like you was walking by the window just like looking at herself and you're just like, wow, I wish that could be me someday. And now <laughs> it is. Like pouring a latte, mm -hmm. I was like, ugh, like that's so sick. Does the way to that ever hit you that like, for a lot of girls looking out the Starbucks window that you're that girl for them. Do you ever feel the weight of that? Oh God, I mean, I definitely, sometimes it's hard to like comprehend that the things I do and say and just like how I exist is so pivotal for other people. But to see like 
the reaction to me online is like so positive and so like yes like we love this we want to embrace this like even like two and a half years in it is a little difficult to like comprehend and to see like people do look at me and they get inspired by it and it is a way that they can like heal themselves mm -hmm. and like it's cool to, like to think like oh 19 year old me would have loved this version of me like I would have looked at her and been like, that's exactly what I want to be. That's exactly how I want to walk through this world. And mm -hmm. I'm so like, it's really just like a lot of what I do is for like little Chrissy who was so powerless. And now me, like mm -hmm. I took all that power and was like, fuck yeah. She's like the juxtaposition between where you are now. Cause you're like, wow, I want to dress like that. And meanwhile, back then you're eponine in <laughs> Les Mis. I was eponine, how do you know that? Do my research on that things. <laughs> Not your deep dive of me. Yeah. <laughs> and you said my last name right, which literally like shocked me when you did that. Well, okay, so like whenever whenever I was reaching out to you, like it's one of those things where it's like I see the name, I hear mm. it every now and then, but it doesn't like stick because it's such like a unique name. Right. But then after like having to type it into Google enough times, I'm just like, okay, now I have it down. Like. <laughs> Every variation, every pronunciation, even the wrong ones, I right. got it. Yeah. That was like crazy. Like honestly, like usually I'm so used to people saying it wrong that like mm. it doesn't phase me if they do and it doesn't bother me much either. It's, the, it's that L that sneaks in. She's weird. Yeah, she's a quir quirky girl. Like I don't know what, like my family like also can't like decide like if it's pronounced or not. Like it's literally mm. a split between our family. Mm. Is it like, it's the schlepeka, is that like more the English pronunciation or is it more the it's it's a check, right? Mm-hmm. Like I literally don't know though because I do get comments from people who are like Polish from, queen, like Polish yeah. or like from Chag, and they're like, "That's not how you say it." And I'm like, "I don't know." <laughs> like <laughs> literally, like I don't know how to say my name either. So it's like it's kind of a question mark and a mystery. Like I'm just saying it how my dad told me to. And so if it's anyone's fault, it's yours, Tom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shout out Tom. Shout out to Tom. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> you have a lot of tattoos. Whenever you uh, film the Bratz music video, or not Bratz, Brat singular, when you film the Brat... <laughs> I don't want to get copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> when you film the Brat music video, I know something was really off for me when I was like watching it, like in the beginning. I couldn't place what it was. And then I realized it's because you had your tattoos completely covered. Yeah. How weird was that? After living with tattoos for so long, then to cover them up and see yourself in the mirror, did you feel like you were looking back at like the old Chrissy? Yes. Like yeah. everything you just said. Yes. I, while they were doing it and I was like watching them, like they put like the red mm -hmm. cover up on it first and then like matched my skin tone. It was like completely gone. I was like, I was honestly freaking out inside a little bit. Like mm -hmm. my anxiety levels were peaking because I did kind of feel like it really just was like, I feel like the lowest point in my life was at like 19, like 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And that was before I had really gotten like covered and stuff. And so it did feel like I was kind of like, regressing into that again and especially for the storyline of the music video it kind of was like that like this like doll looking girl who like doesn't have a hold on herself like in any way and then there's these two like drag queens that come in who are like let's fix this bitch like that mm. really was like what had happened to me like especially like with my relationship with like drag and like the Chicago drag scene at like I had they had known me from TikTok but like obviously things are still a journey for me and like being embraced so much mm -hmm. by the drag community and the queer community there like it did turn me into this girl like i know i'm an honorary drag queen to F them fox news was right it corrupted <laughs> she was just a humble catholic humble humble so, like one thing about me people would say is that i'm so humble you're the most humble person mm. you you know yeah you no know, like on earth actually <laughs> yeah <laughs> like I've, oh yeah. And everyone's been saying that. Mm -hmm. They're like, Chrissy, she's humble. Yeah. <laughs> Off Brand Water is not the sponsor of this episode, by the way, mm -mm. just so you know. Just so you know, it's the tits. Mm -hmm. Both sets. <laughs> A fan actually uh, gave me that at DragCon. Um, this is amazing. And if the person that made this is watching, if you ever felt like sending me one, like <laughs> <laughs> my DMs are open. Yeah. You can't find, you can't find that at Walmart. No. Oh, uh -huh. we support local artists mm -hmm. everywhere we go. <laughs> as 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 local artists ourselves, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we use the word, I use the word art loosely. Like right. I tell people all the time they bring me stuff and I'll be like, wow, you are like actually talented. This is amazing. <laughs> I get it. No, I get it. It's like, I'm just like being a girl. Literally like, just a girl. Like other people are like really queening out and I'm like, I'm just being a girl. Mm -hmm. Like 
you guys deserve this more than me. Yeah. <laughs> like, who is Christy? She's a bad guy. It's like, just a girl. Just a girl. She's just, she just, like, is a girl, and mm -hmm. she's a girl. Mm -hmm. That's it. A, yeah, a signed girl at birth, stayed girl, stayed girl, is girl. We want, will like, be you girl. know, like, and we have our questions, but we don't need to go into that. Oh, questions? You know, sometimes it's just like girl, and then sometimes it's like girl, and then oh, sometimes I, it's like girl, and then it's like girl, but then sometimes it's like girl, but then it's like girl. She, literally just a girl? Question mark. Yeah, and like the, every time I say that, like there is like the hidden question mark. Mm -hmm. Like she's just kind of blurred out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. It's like, it's just a girl, and then like parentheses, tentatively. Yeah, no, it's like, who knows? Yeah. I don't moment. either. <laughs> like, yeah. The thing about me is, I don't know either. Yeah, well. But we're saying. We're going we're gonna to revisit uh, in like, <laughs> however here. long, a completely here. different person. Right, who knows? Yeah, you're going to be like, <laughs> I'm, you're like, I'm literally just a guy. I'm literally just a guy. Maybe that will be my arc one day. But like, who knows? Wait till the next album. The next so you, Yeah, that way, because... If you're gonna go through these changes, you might as well monetize it, you know? <laughs> no. You're already going through the identity, you know? Right. Literally, why not? <laughs> so, I wanna talk about the old Chrissy for just a little bit. Take us back. Obviously, you're here now, you made it, finally. But let's see how we got here. So, going back, say around like seven year old Chrissy, mm -hmm. did you, like, were you wanting to be a pop star when you were that age? Obviously, you went more towards theater, but like, was there like a phase where that planted the seed of like, I'm gonna be a pop star one day? Yeah, absolutely. I think what happened was like theater, like Broadway felt more realistic in a sense than like pop star, like Britney Spears, like that just felt so unreachable. Mm -hmm. So like, but yeah, like a seven year old me, I literally was like listening to like all the Hannah Montana CDs, like whenever that like Miley and Hannah CD came out, like, you know, I was in my room screaming like the seven things I hate about you, like with my little like fake microphone, like doing choreography, like. Anytime you left a room, you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like literally every time. Yeah. Like I still might do that. And like, it's, it's insane. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it is something like I've always tried for. And then I think, yeah, like getting a little older, I was like, that's like too big and shiny. I can't. I don't know how to do that. I can't figure that out. Like theater I can do at my local um, hotel, <laughs> like, or my local middle school or some like weird community theater that'll let me in. So I was like, this is what I can do. Mm -hmm. Let's be realistic. I love that like at seven years old, you're like, let's keep it realistic here. No, Other because... kids are like, I'm gonna be an astronaut. You're like, Act pop star's too much for me. Maybe we'll go off Broadway. <laughs> no, like that's so me coded. Like at seven <laughs> was also when I decided to start going by Chrissy because mm -hmm. my full name's like Christine. But I was like, God, Christine is just way too serious for a girl like me. Mm -hmm. I was like, it has to be Chrissy. Like I remember like riding my bike with my best friend at seven and he was like, oh, are you like, you're going by Chrissy now? I was like, yeah, like. Christine's so mature. Like, that's like an adult's name. Like, why was I talking like that? It's, I don't know why I was traumatized, but yeah. like. Yeah, the fact that like you were like pragmatic at seven, so it's like something stunted you for sure. Like, it's pretty fierce, but it's also like, oh, that could probably be mm. depressing, and it was, but like, yeah. we slayed. Christine is like an old lady name. Is that your grandma's name? No, I don't know my grandma. No, I know my grandma's name. <laughs> <laughs> not, not you trying to act ignorant of your grandma. <laughs> well, like, they all died before oh. I knew them. Oh, well, that's in peace. Queen. Maybe one of them is my dog now, mm -hmm. though. It's like, Grandma, stop pooping on the floor. <laughs> no, literally, like, Grandma, why did you eat my tampon? <laughs> grandma, stop. <laughs> stop. Grandma's crazy for this one. She's just, she's just cuckoo mm -hmm. bananas a little bit. Grandma's just boot scooting on the floor. <laughs> she's just living her life. Yeah. And like I would too if I was a dog. Yeah, like I do now. <laughs> yeah, like fuck it. Well, why wait for reincarnation? Yeah, hang on. That is so true. Mm -hmm. Why not just do it all now? Yeah. Why not? Simple. Let's bust out these nice. lives. Just do it all. Yeah, hey. She also did tell me I had like 20 lives. And this was my last one, so I was going to do it right. And I was like, are this you, is what you sure? settled on? Like this is what's doing this lifetime right. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll take it, I guess. Like, I'm humble, remember, at the end of the day. I feel like if it was my last one, I'd be like, let's go ahead and do hardcore drugs. No, <laughs> right. You know? Like, why not, actually? Yeah. Why it's not? like, this is your last life, you're going to take depression medication? Like, no, <laughs> go full out. That's why I can never keep taking them. Like, I always start, like, a Lexapro, a Zoloft or something, then it's like two months in, and I'm like, it's not working. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm just going to go, I'm going to be crazy, go off my meds, and then it's like two months later, I'm on a new one. Mm -hmm. And like, that's life, baby. That's just who we are yeah, and all that go, jazz. Everyone goes through phases, you go through prescriptions. It's just. <laughs> like, one thing about me is I love a prescription. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm in my lithium phase right now. Like, just like don't let's like not even talk about it. You should it just again. title your albums just like whatever medication you're prescribed right now. Oh my god, I really should. What was it? Just propranolol. <laughs> era two, era two for Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. <laughs> Whenever I see all like, your TikToks, hear your music, I don't think theater kid initially. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't seem like the brand. Like you don't seem like the other theater kids that I grew up with. <laughs> like that, like the person you are now does not look like the person in this picture. These are <laughs> this is a different person <laughs> entirely. You <laughs> like this is this is a whole nother person. You dug, you dug through. I'm like going to kill you after this. <laughs> you dug through my Facebook, didn't you? I was like, oh my god! Like, no, actually, your Facebook is like shut down tight. She's shut down. Mm -hmm. She's shut down because of this exactly. Like <laughs> this is the like this is why we should never look through my Facebook. Uh -huh. And how did you get this? Just researching. God, and I was an actor. You see that? Mm -hmm. I said I made a face. No, yeah, Acting. no. It's it's like whenever I was like looking through, I was like, oh, you know, find out like where she come from, what's the story. And I thought I was gonna find like a bunch of like serious like pictures and headshots, and there's just so many pictures of like, you just like in musicals, just being silly goofy. <laughs> like silly, it's goofy literally girl. just me being silly goofy girl yeah. in musicals. But it's like you were saying, you channel like a lot of that into like your music now. It's a lot more like theatrical themes, characters, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely. I think like something I've been experimenting more with too is like actually creating like a storyline in my music, like a beginning, middle and end. Um, because it's just so fun. Like I love to listen to a song and be like, where is this going? Like lyrically. Like I think that's something that's just so interesting that I haven't heard a lot of just yet. And so it is really cool to have those like specific references because I think it just keeps it keeps it fresh. Whenever you drop your first album, are you gonna call it a concept album? Or are you not that pretentious yet? Oh, I'm pretentious. Oh, are you and okay? I'm humble. And you're humble. Okay. Like one thing about me is so like, it's gonna be a concept album. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is. Like, mm -hmm. um, like I'm gonna be like the blonde Melanie Martinez. This <laughs> is gonna be my circus. I mean, we'll see. Um, <laughs> oh, I used to have a desk here. I just like muscle just memory. Just, just, just chuck her. Drama. She doesn't like the thing about her is she doesn't need to be here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she no. She is here though. It's she is, and she part. is in me. Like I do actually like. That girl is so mm -hmm. like she's so pivotal. Like she, she created this for me as well. Like if I didn't do all those like years of theater, like I would not be confident enough to like sit here mm -hmm. and like talk the way I am or to like make the music I do. Like it lives in you. Okay, go okay, to yeah. it. We're still talking about theater. Okay, Ooh. we're good on the place. We still got it. Okay. Not a lot. I'm not, I'm not like super deep. No, no, no. I love it. I'm just like, oh, that photo just like <laughs> changed me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I haven't seen her in a while. No. That was the girl from the uh, the beginning of the Brat music video. That was the girl. And she had the like Anastasia like eyebrows too. Like the like really like. Oh, the long ones? The really long ones. Like I looked back the other day at my eyebrows and like I was drawing two giant C's above my eyes and not one person told me that it was that bad and that's how i know i was wildly hated mm -hmm. because like not one person was like girl your eyebrows well that, that's a shared experience you have with like every drag queen because they go to shows everyone tells them they're sickening bachelorette parties or tell them how the most beautiful person ever right. and then they go on drag race and get red for their makeup <laughs> and it's like wow Oh. Which someone would have told me before I got here. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm talking about other people. Oh yeah, not you. Yeah, no. And the thing is, I'd never think it was you. Yeah. Never. But as I mentioned, yeah, you're going through. So, you're, you literally went through like twice as much product than you needed. So like you were refilling your little eyebrow pins twice as often Instantly. as like the average person. And like I didn't have enough money to do that. Like I was, I was stealing those. Like the little, what was it? The the. Oh my god, it oh, was the, a specific little, one. It little, was in the pot. The pomade. The pomade. The, yeah, the brown It was pomade. that. Like, I was, like, going into Sephora, like, putting it down my, like, oh my god, I stole so much as a kid. I got, I had to, like, go to community service for it for so long because I would just steal you so Community much. service? You got yeah. arrested? Yeah, I guess so. I was, like, six. Yeah, I got arrested. <laughs> Were you in a cop car, handcuffs, or anything? No. I was just like in a Target. Oh, okay. And like the police came and they're like, that was bad. I literally tried stealing like 50 bras. Like it was actually insane. You're, it's like walk it out. You just have a bunch like, of lumps under your shirt. So literally, I went in with a Target bag that was completely like nothing was in it and walked out with it full. But like didn't go to like it was so dumb. Of all places. Again, like not to judge a book by its cover, but like. If I saw you now, I'd be like, that girl used to steal from like yeah. Wet Seal. 
not target um, yeah know. i mean like what i i don't know what really went through me like i i was a big stealer at forever 21 like i'd always steal the earrings mm. um any clothes yeah you just like go into the dressing room with like a bunch of shit so they couldn't see and then wear it under especially in the winter it was really easy to steal if anyone was wondering winter is prime time in chicago um we don't condone it though no even this monetization that's something they strive for, deceptive really? practices, encouraging bad behavior. So is this whole thing like gonna like not, like you're not gonna get paid because I'm on it now? I don't know. Okay. Maybe I'll just mark it as educational and title it like what not to be and maybe they'll get scraped by it. I don't know. We'll One thing it about it is don't steal. Like all I'm saying is don't steal. Mm. But what you would do back in the day. What I would do back in the day was I'd wear a really big coat. Mm. I'd walk into a Forever 21, get a bunch of clothes, wear half of them on my body, zip the coat up, mm -hmm. put the rest away and just leave. And I had some pretty cute outfits back then. You just left that mall every day with a thick ass parka. I really just, did. Yeah. I really did. I mean, with Chicago it wasn't a It wasn't a puffer coat when you showed up, but mm -hmm. it definitely was when you left. No, like every time. That was like when I worked at Starbucks too. Oh mm. my God. I would literally leave, I would come in with a backpack that was like completely empty and then leave with it completely full because I would just steal like all the oat milk mm -hmm. and like the lemonades and stuff. Cause I was like, I'm not gonna buy oat milk. Yeah. I'm going to steal it if it's right there. Like me and her, we used to work at a, we used to work at Chili's together for a little while. Love is it love. It was like, what, she was working there and I got fired from a job. So I just like, we needed, I needed to work. So she got me a job there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we used to steal food all the time. Right. Cause like restaurant ranch is the best ranch. It's the best brand. So it's like, yeah, we're gonna steal some. Yeah. yeah. It's also like we're working for like minimum wage and like dealing with horrible customers. Like, mm -hmm. of course I'm gonna steal from this corporation. Yeah, you justify it to yourself. You're like, I deserve this. No, exactly. Like as I'm leaving with a backpack full of oat milk on my like walk home, getting on the like the owl, I'm like, this was all worth it in the mm -hmm. end. Yeah. Thank you. And then you just throw it into one of your 14 bedrooms. You're like, I just did it for the thrill of it. <laughs> <My> <laughs> Yeah, just for the thrill. Just yeah. for the thrill. Like, collections weren't calling me at that point in my life. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> uh, but, but I feel like with your music, obviously because it's like your theater background, I f unlike some pop singers, I feel like you actually are a really good singer. Yeah. But with your theater background, a lot of the songs you sang, when can we expect, like, ballads, like slower songs? Like, when are we going to get, oh, like, no, don't like this Chrissy? <laughs> Oh my god, I'm like not listening right now. Yes, da, 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 da. Right now. We, we, are we getting into this? Wait, we're for the run. Oh, that was so bad. That was like. Ah! When are we going to get like that, the slow Chrissy? Is that going to be like the next album? Because you got the concept album. Like, I feel like you got room. God, like, that literally broke something in me as you fucking played that. Like. <laughs> Like literally, I couldn't listen. Like yeah. I, li if I wanted to, like I couldn't. Like there's, thank God, <laughs> saved by the fucking ball for a second. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you, like really are a good singer. Like you got some pipes on you, but I feel like a lot of people, you know, like a lot of the songs you're doing, are, like very like poppy. But like, when are you really gonna like let them have it? You know, give them a good lightly um, auto tune like ballad. You know. Yeah, I mean. That's so, I think what I'm doing right now is like I'm trying to finish off this like pop, this straight pop era with my music with like a mixtape soon, which is super exciting. And it's gonna be a lot of like, kind of pretty similar to like the I'm So Hot, the Alpha, like that kind of sounding stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there will be some belty moments. There might be a ballad for you on there. Mm -hmm. I am deciding, but I will say like the second era that I'm planning and like writing for it's a Joanne phase. A lot of the, like, when I first started doing music, I was kind of told to not do any of that. Like, not to have the theater, not to have the vibrato, not to have, like, all the, like, kind of crazy runs. They wanted, like, very straight pop mm. vocals, like me and some of the people I worked with, which is why I'm not working with them anymore. Um, because I felt like it was trying to change, like, something that just really made me me. Like, I don't want to be a carbon copy of anyone else like I want to be authentically Chrissy like I've been online in the past like however long I've been mm -hmm. um so yeah I think like this era will finish out and it will be there will be the fun vocals and there may be a valid but like the next era is going to be like I think it's going to be crazy mm -hmm. and I'm like really excited to get into it 
But well, speaking of it, you're talking about like posting online. What do you think you're more talented at? Like your music or online shit posting? Mm. I think it's on and off. Like I think it comes in waves. I think specifically right now I don't feel talented in online shit posting. Mm. And I think it's because I've been doing it so long. I've almost hit not a block, but like a block, mm. I guess. Like I I think my mind is like so heavily on music right now and that's like what I want to do. It's what I've always wanted to do. And I want to keep doing, you know, shit posting and like having fun, but I am just like I've become more serious about the art I'm making. And not that it wasn't serious before, but it was so much more lighthearted mm -hmm. than like writing these songs about yeah. my life and like kind of going deep into that, you know. It's also different too cuz like now whenever you post online, it's like part of like your brand and like your job almost in a sense, whereas before it was just like you goofing off in your room during COVID. Oh, exactly, because also at that point there was no, I didn't think you could make money off of this. Mm -hmm. Like I, I literally, like truly, it was in between each one of the three jobs would I go home, change, make a video, post, go work, come home at night, make another, see it blew up, and it was like, oh, this is so fun. I didn't know management was a thing, like any of that. <laughs> what was it like though, like for you, like, whenever you woke up one morning and you had like 500,000 likes on a video. I was so confused. Like I, I, I like don't think I could comprehend that like so many people just saw mm -hmm. my face. I remember like so vividly the first video that ever went viral of mine. It was like me talking about um, some guy who called me like a whore in a Walgreens. Like it was just not, it was just shit posting for like the 10 friends I had who were following me at the time. And it had gone like, it got a million views overnight. And I woke up and I was like at my shift at Starbucks in the bathroom, like checking like, my phone. Yeah. You're, like hiding away, like, oh, I just need to go pee. And I'm like just on my phone because like every girl does that. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, I first saw that I was getting a bunch of random Instagram followers. And I was like, who set up these bots to follow me? Mm -hmm. Like, which one of these exes did this to me? And then I checked TikTok and I was like, oh my God. Like, it was very much an out of body experience because like being viewed on that level is like, disorienting yeah i'm also like you i'm very modest but i right. also so I, modest. I also understand what it's like to go through like a wave of like sudden popularity it's like daunting it's like scary it's like yeah. from the middle of nowhere while well, these people watching me mm -hmm. like, it's scary every move every uh -huh. move and then when you become someone that like people look up to it's like oh god i have to maintain this and like no mistakes can be made mm -hmm. or else i'm letting down thousands of yeah. people and that is like terrifying because it's like at the end of the day like all that popped off when I was like 19, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. Like that's still, I'm 23, but I see that as like so young. And it's like, even now I see this as like so young, mm -hmm. like having so many people look to you. It's like, I have had a lot of life experiences that I can speak on and say things about, but also it's like, I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. And like, as much as like a good example I want to be, I'm still like, I'm still just a girl. I'm yeah. still just figuring it out, you know? Yeah, I was like, I'm just a 23-year-old girl. I'm just a 23-year-old girl in her teens. Mm -hmm. Like, that's it. That's why it's crazy, too, because, like, because you just put out some videos that people latched onto. Now there's, like, people that are like, this is an authority on, like, how to live life. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, like, yeah, it's so cool in a way, but it's also, like, a little scary, because then if I start, like, changing, like, not, I don't think I'll change, like, what I've, said or like felt but it's like the more I grow older and I shift like I don't want people to be so attached to that version of me that like mm. this newer version they can't latch on to like that's it makes sense like my followers are just kind of up and down and up and down up and down because I think I'm doing something new like I'm doing something that the audience I've had for like two and a half years isn't used to yeah like this is not what I signed on for absolutely and it's like totally like I get why they'd be leaving and like more are coming like it's very much a shift but it is scary to be in that position because it's like no like I don't want to disappoint you I don't want you to leave but I want you to follow me and like follow this like journey I'm on and I want to have them as included as possible but at the same time it is like we're gonna like grow and change mm -hmm. and be different versions of ourselves. And like, it's just like a testament to life too. It's like, people are gonna come go like mm -hmm. as you change and you just have to be like, okay, slay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but with like the influx of like followers and all the love you received, you also received like a lot of negativity, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you get a lot of the negativity just immediately out of the gate or was it like a slow trickle in? I think out of the gate I did because I think everything I do is like polarizing in a way. Like, I've, I think right away there was a lot of men on the internet who were like, 
I hate her because I would talk so poorly about men. Um, but I was really just talking from like my experience as a child, as a teenager, as a young adult with men that so many people could relate to. And like, it's unfortunate that the shoe fit for them that they had to hate so hard. Like that's mm. kind of how I saw it. It's like the things I say, like if it's not about you, you don't need to get offended, but you're only getting offended because it like hits you where it hurts a little bit. Mm. It rings a little too true, yeah. a little too close to home for them. A little too close to home. And it's mm -hmm. like, that's not my responsibility to protect you from. Like <laughs> I'm just speaking from like my life, like as Chrissy. And if that hurts you, then well, Okay. Has it only been online, like the negativity, or have you had have you had scary moments like in person? Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of uh, I've gotten a lot of negativity from just like people in my life, like a lot. Like I think like family. Yeah, yeah. Pretty uh, pretty not great things um, were happening. Like that. Just some people were just very not happy with the things I was saying, how I was looking expressing myself and the way that some things I said hit too close to home and it's like, well, I wonder why. <laughs> I think being someone who just like truly has been traumatized by men at like a younger age, it's just like, I, I think it's just strange for, I think anyone who's like known me like at any, any kind of level to see me grow up, become myself and then start speaking on past experiences. And I think it's like, as, a young, like a teen and like kind of a younger kid, like I was so shy and like so afraid to like speak up or say anything that like this shift was just like absolutely bonkers <laughs> for them like to it, see. Like it was like liberating for you, but it was jarring for them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like I think everyone's like face cracked a little bit and it was just like, what's like, is she okay? What's going on with her? But like didn't want to believe that like I am okay and this is liberating and instead kind of looked at it with a lot of anger and resentment. So it definitely has like kind of affected a lot of my like relationships I had had in my past and like growing up and everything, but it has created such better relationships for me now, like with chosen family. Yeah, But outside of your relationship with like your fans and your family, you also had like your own personal relationships. And at one point you were in an abusive one. And that yeah. was like right around the time of like all the TikTok and everything happening was like also? About, yeah. So I had gotten out of that relationship, I'd say, I think it was March, 2020. And I started like really posting on TikTok June, 2020. So like there was like a separation mm -hmm. of those two things. But in that time frame before I started posting was like, that moment of like figuring myself out, like, who are you? Mm -hmm. Like, because I think I lost myself and any sense of being a human being so much in that abusive relationship that when I left, I had like finally done the hard thing. I had, like finally got out, but then it was like, part of that fear was being like, who are you outside of this? Because like, all I know is like this abuse or like this, the way I'm being treated, like the way this person has like brought me down to nothing. And so I had to do that self work and be like, who are you? Like, who is Chrissy? What does she like? Like, what does she not like? Like, what are boundaries? Like, just kind of like being really gentle with myself. And I did really start to do that. And then when I got online, it was like kind of a, a slower growth. Like I was still doing that, but I was still like, you know, posting like the authentic moments of that shift for me. Mm -hmm. And like allowing myself to be funny, like that was like so liberating for me. Like, so you, your your solace was like TikTok and Animal Crossing. Basically. Like literally that. Yeah. Like <laughs> literally that. Like I was like, it was so liberating to go online and like make a joke and to have people laugh at it. Mm -hmm. Like that's all I needed. Like, it never was like. I didn't even know like money was involved in this. That's how like out of the fucking picture I am. You're, you're, you're like, I'm just here for validation. Like I didn't know you could make money. Absolutely. And then it was like so jarring to me that other people were getting validation from me. Cause I was like, what? Well, I, I don't know anything about this. But then I was like, wait, I do. Like I don't need, I didn't need to like be this person for the past, like however many years to like know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think it was so authentic and the things I say now are so authentic because it really just like it is as I go kind of thing. Like mm. I don't have it all figured out, but I'm okay with that. But I'm going to speak on what I know right now. 
yeah and how it works for me today it's like with your journey and getting into one of the more pivotal aspects of it as i said was animal crossing <laughs> <Right>. um <laughs> pivotal yeah one thing about that is it was pivotal yeah <laughs> but starting your new like little animal crossing family did you have any remorse for leaving behind your webkins family <laughs> how would you know <laughs> Did you not feel like you abandoned your family? Like, you know, like I really did. Like the thing is, it's like okay, I was such a Webkins kid. Like for my birthday and for any event or like whatever it was for Pat, like five years straight, I would only ask for Webkins. Mm -hmm. So I had like fifty of them. I had a badge on Webkins, and so it was a little like crazy when I was like twenty-one years old, not playing Webkins anymore, mm -hmm. and I had moved on to a game that wasn't Webkins and I had to have a new family. It was like, I'm leaving something behind, but mm. maybe we just have to. Your login might still work. Can you try it? Oh my God. At the end, we're gonna check in. We're gonna check in on the Webkins. Check in. My username was happy1114. Uh -huh. What was so. your password? Can't say. Well, I'll log in for you. <laughs> I'll tell you. Is it a password you still use, your Webkins password? <laughs> I like actually have no clue. I have two ideas of what it could be. Okay. One may be my name. Okay. <laughs> but the other one, it's it's. I'm not sure. Okay. We're gonna figure it out. Okay. We'll we'll see. We'll see. If we can uh, hack it and get right. back to it. <laughs> Re reunite to. you with your family. Please. On Animal Crossing, did you ever evict one of the villagers because they were ugly? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I would like hit them with like. I'd like hit them with the shovel oh, and like gosh. put trash cans in front of their house so they would leave, and it worked. Like, I don't know, it's just like, why were ugly people coming to Slutville? Which was mm. the name of mine, but I spelled I was two U's, because yeah, yeah. Slutville. It's, it, like, it's Swedish. It's Swedish, or yeah. whatever. Like, I know. saw it, at, it was the name of a chair at Ikea, I thought it was cute. Exactly, and they allowed it. Yeah. Do you feel that discriminated against and evicting someone based off their appearance in Animal Crossing is a modern day form of gentrification? Mm. Smooth brain. Oh, uh, say it again. <laughs> Deflecting. <laughs> um, okay, back on topic. So, with, like, growing your following online, though, like TikTok, going from, like, 1 million followers to 3, I think you're, like, 5 million now. Mm -hmm. At what point did you say, I want to weaponize this following to become a pop star? Oh, my God. I think it was... I've always wanted to. Mm -hmm. Like, as I built, I was like... When, when did you think it start? When did it start to cement that it might be a reality or possibility, even? Last year. Definitely, it was like last year, like this time. Last year, this time is actually exactly when I wrote I'm So Hot, which is like crazy. Mm -hmm. Like something I would say, like I'm So Hot was like, that is something I would say on TikTok word for word. Yeah. So it's going to be easier to cross platform to another thing because it's not so out of my wheelhouse. Yeah, it, it, you, you don't have like multiple Chrissy's in different places. Like they all kind of tie into each other. Absolutely. I feel like you're really smart too, like the way you marketed it because like, before I even knew you were releasing music, I was hearing that TikTok audio. Before I even saw your TikToks promoting it, I saw other people doing little dances and stuff. Oh, no way. But how scary was it for you, like, filming those TikToks? Like, how hard was it for you to fight the cringe of, like, doing the dances in public? Because I, I feel like with stuff like that, like, there's a certain level of cringe you have to overcome. Yeah. But once you break through, like, it becomes iconic. Absolutely. But it's hard to get to past that point. And there's a way you have to get past it. I think I literally had to just be like, I'm going to die one day. <laughs> like I'm literally not like you had to get existential before each TikTok. No, like actually, like so often because so many of my TikToks are filmed outside too. Mm -hmm. Especially some of my older ones. Like so much of it, like I just had to be like, like I literally just have to say whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I literally, like these people passing me in the street, like they're gonna see me and they're gonna go, that girl's weird, and then they're probably gonna remember it, but they're not gonna know who the fuck that was. Yeah. And like that's what kept me going because mm -hmm. I was like. Whatever, like it doesn't have to be personal. Like people thinking I'm weird is like the least of my problems. Mm -hmm. Like, and so I did, I did truly have to get past the cringe and just be like, this is for something bigger. Mm -hmm. And it's for a couple likes. Yeah. And that's what I need. Like, honestly, if people in the background are staring, that's good for the algorithm. It's I'm more saying, engaging. I'm saying exactly that. And it just like, even just posting it was so scary because I was like, this is so important to me mm -hmm. that I had to like let go of all expectation. Just be like, if it flops, it flops. And like, that's mm -hmm. fine. And I can't like let myself stop making music because one song doesn't do well. What, what, what's been the piece of content that you've created that flopped the hardest for you? Where you're like, you had so much faith in it and it just... I think a lot of my content. I said most of it. <laughs> like, I would say, well, something I think all the time is that, like, 30, no, like, 
out of like all the content I've made, like 30% of it goes viral, 70 doesn't. Mm -hmm. But like the thing about TikTok is it's like, you just have to keep posting like every day. So and you just like take it down and repost it later? Yeah, or you just take it down, do another version of it and it goes viral. It's just like, that's the algorithm of TikTok. Like there is no rhyme or reason why your video isn't doing well, mm -hmm. unless it's a community guideline or whatever. But like, if it's just a video, like, if it doesn't do well, it really doesn't have anything to do with what I had to learn. Like, it doesn't have anything to do with you. Like, I could say the same thing in just, like, a different tone in a different location and it will. Mm -hmm. It's, like, just, like, the luck of the draw. Mm -hmm. So, like... Yeah, except for you, person, watching this. Yours is flopping because mm -hmm. you suck. You suck. Yeah. Make better content. Try harder. I'm, I'm yeah. just kidding. You're so humble. <laughs> no. Be more than just a girl. Be more than just a girl. Because I'm just a girl. <laughs> and you can't beat me. There's the guidance that you needed. All the people watching, you're looking for like the piece that what message what to take away this to you? drive you. Right. You will never be Chrissy Shlopeka. You can never be me. Just so kidding. find yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Try harder. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever you moved to Chicago, uh, a lot of people don't know that like, you actually have like some ties to like the drag scene. How, when how did you get into the Chicago drag scene? I would just go with my like queer friends to mm all the shows I'd like always be in the front always be tipping always be recording them putting them on my stories like you're like this, this like the supportive mom I was like I really was and like I I just adore that like I think I don't know like I've just always like as like growing up to like watching Drag Race I would watch it on one two three movies and get so many viruses on my phone but I'd be watching like like pheromone and I'd be like she's so pretty like mm -hmm. this is just like Amazing, you know, and like that was like the pop culture I was into. It was like musical theater and drag race. Yeah, you're like I don't know what's going on with geopolitics. No, but I know who Pheromone is. I do know who Pheromone is, and I love her. Yeah. <laughs> I like adore Delano. Just like those girls, I just like, like I I really connected with them. Like as I like was growing up and like a, as a teenager and like a young adult and like now it's like. So when I got to go to like a local scene, it was just like, oh, like mm -hmm. this is like amazing. And then I had met Ramona Slick, who's like my drag mother, like who had adopted me. She was just like, girl, you're a drag queen. Like, like Tarzan, like I'm her mother now. No, literally. And she's helped me with everything. She helped me with my I'm So Hot music video. She's like styled me for shows. Like she really like takes care of me like as a mom like and I think pop stars are drag queens also mm -hmm. like that's literally a form of like drag and so I don't think I'd also be able to wear what I wear or, like be the person I am without being so influenced by that growing up so like the answer to the question earlier like what is a bimbo like it's just it's just a girl who watched too much Drag Race. It's literally just it's, a girl who watched so much Drag Race. Yeah. On one, two, three movies, though. On one, two, three movies, because we couldn't afford the subscription. We could not afford it, and I'm sorry. Like, I also couldn't keep up. Like, why are we changing platforms all the time? Mm -hmm. I'll text Rue and let her know. That, yeah, it's like, like, hey, sis. Hey, sis, we like, can... can we just keep it on one thing? Like, can it mm -hmm. just stay on, like, Paramount Plus? Like, who's MTV? Yeah. But, like, um, anyway, <laughs> just my one note. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's rude to share her password with you. It's yeah. Oh, it's and fine. that's so true. Until they take that away. That's one like a, a crazy thing about Drag Race is um, when you get on the show, they don't give you a login code. You don't get a login code. Really? I was on the season actively. I was going to a gig, getting ready for like to do a show, and my episode was on. Like an episode I was on, and I was just in the hotel room bootlegging it because someone was like streaming it on a TikTok live and I was just watching it on there. You're joking. Yeah, because I didn't have a login. I was like, I was, like, and I also like fresh off Drag Race, I don't have any money. So I was like, I right. have to bootleg this. Wait, that's so funny. Mm -hmm. And they clocked me in the comments. Like someone made a joke. They're like, oh, Maddie Morbus is this funny. And they're like, wait. And then they realized it was actually me. You're like, yeah, guys, hey. Like, yeah. I'm just watching, like, you guys. Yeah, just like, don't mind me. I'm Wait, just... they would at least let you watch your show for free, I would think. You would think. You would think. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll text her. I'll text you. Yeah. I'll text her. I'll text yeah, I'll her, too. Her. We'll, we'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> Love her. Wait, you being the girl in the front row, like, cheering for everyone, not to profile you, did you ever go to a show with a hard front, colorful Party City wig? Yes or no? No. Were you ever? Okay, you were never that girl. No, because I had, like, pink hair. Oh, okay. I've been like a pink or blonde girl. Oh, okay. You were never that basic. So you were like, yeah. No. I had the extensions. You, 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 you were still like, 
You you were a little out of theater enough that you were a little alt, so you weren't okay. No, yeah, I was like cool, I would say, but like not super. Like I like some things I was doing like were a little atrocious. Like my eyebrows, like that's one thing I can mm-hmm. never get right. Like I think they're fine now, but also like don't mm-hmm. look at them and don't judge. Me. Whenever people are like or like brushing their eyebrow hairs up and like everyone have really bushy brows. Oh, I was so that girl for a really long time. I say, why are we doing this? I was that like up until like recently. Like I think I'm a little that currently. Mm-hmm. With some people, it's like jarring. Yeah, where it's like. It's like you're a, a you're a sorority girl wearing like an oversized t-shirt and like jogging shorts. Those brows don't match anything else you have going on right now. Okay, that's true because I think everything else I like wear kind of balanced it out. It was like that girl's crazy. There, yeah, there's also like cohesiveness. Yeah. But if you like throw a trend on, it doesn't match anything else. It's like that what are you doing? That's so true. Like not the sorority girls with the Anastasia yeah. brows. Like that. That was a trip. Mm-hmm. I was like, whoa. Like, what's going on over there? What's going on over there? Every, everyone's walking their own paths, you know. Hey, and that's what we have to remember. Yeah. All you have to remember is just like live your life mm-hmm. and just know that you will never be Chrissy Shlapeka. And you're never going to be me. <laughs> what do you think is the biggest misconception people have about you? I think, um, oh, I think a lot of people think I'm like not mean, but like I think people are very surprised at how nice I am, like in person. Do you think that people think you're mean because you make TikTok saying to hit people with their cars? Probably, Maybe but it's like, don't. In? Don't judge a book by their cover or the things they say on the internet. Yeah. Don't judge a book by its cover or the things it says and does. Yeah. Like, stop judging people for what they do and say. Circling back to your music career, if there's any person you like, your dream collab. Ooh. uh... Or let's, let's do two. Let's do one, like... Dream collab will manifest it. Something that's, like, realistic in the short term. Mm -hmm. And dream collab, like, long-term ultimate dream. I don't know what's like realistic in the short term. Like someone that's like attainable, it could happen in a few years. Hmm. I mean, I would really, I would really, you know, hope for a Slater collab. Like, I think that would be absolutely incredible. I still think that's like, I don't know how obtainable that is, but like that is definitely like my mm-hmm. dream. I just like love her as an artist mm-hmm. so much. And then I think like, like, probably never gonna happen vibes like Lady Gaga. I would die for a Lady Gaga collab. Mm-hmm. Like she would never look me in the eye, I'm sure, yeah. but like. No, we're gonna manifest it. It's not even gonna be a Chrissy feature. She's yeah. gonna be featured on your song. Oh my God. Yeah. I would sob, like I could die. But what if like you finally get to that point and it's like a jazz album? A jazz album? Yeah, one of her jazz things. Oh, and you know I would do it. Yeah. Did you not know I was in the top jazz choir two years in a row? Well, and she only wants you to scat. And I would do it. I was a scatter. Right, we don't need to know about your personal life. You knew? Oh, well. <laughs> Not like you just took that photo of me out <laughs> and said, look at this. Wait, I, okay, I, that was just for like a little like funsy thing. Okay, there's just one right. off. It's an isolated. You just don't want to hear about my love for jazz. That, that was an isolated incident. Okay. Right, right. But uh, okay, last question. Most important one. With the music you're putting out, can we expect a saxophone solo? <laughs> I'm gonna cry. There, saxophone was really big, big like ten years ago. It, oh it can make a comeback. Look at the part. Look at the part I did. I put it right here, mm-hmm. and I was like, all the cool girls are doing this. They are parting their hair, and they're definitely playing the saxophone. That big ass one, whatever it's called. Yeah, I think alto, alto, right? No, alto. I played the alto sax. Or is that like baritone? this? Is the baritone? I think. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, you're probably like three foot in that picture, so. I, this, I was like exactly like 11 mm. years old in this. Yeah, but I mean, with Lizzo, oh Lizzo incorporating the flute, when can we expect the saxophone solo? So you doing this is so funny because actually like me and my producers have been like, we need to get you a saxophone to do, like to just gag mm-hmm. everyone and be like, wait, she can play the saxophone. Like I, we, you, I mean like you outed me a little bit because it was like, this was gonna be a whole scheme, but like also at the same time, like, yeah, like there will be one day. Mm-hmm. I just need to get a saxophone, but those are like expensive. Mm-hmm. Like why are just they get you, Just get you a little Amazon one, it'd be fine. And Amazon, I feel like those have had to be like 200 bucks or something. How do you have a pool, but 200 bucks is so daunting for you? Yeah. You have a pool in LA, but you're like 200 bucks for a saxophone? Get and you part. know what? The thing is I grew up poor, and so anything is gonna make me go, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know.
Oh. You're like, the light bill, ooh, maybe I can just keep it dark for a month. That's no, a little like, old. actually something me and my roommate did talk about. Like, <laughs> like, insane. We got our water bill back, and we're like, we should just not use water. <laughs> no, it's absurd. Like, I, me and my roommate, like, cried. Like, we were like, oh, this... This might be it for us. Well, unfortunately, that is the last of my cards and the last uh, of time we have today. But before you go, I actually wanted to give you a gift. And it's not actually not even a gift for you. It's a gift for seven-year-old Chrissy. Not it's, the bumpets! It's the bumpets you always wanted. I wanted one of these so bad. Mm -hmm. How did you know this? Not the deep dive you did in my life. No, like I've actually been thinking about these lately. Mm -hmm. I was like, how do we bring back the bump it? I was surprised uh, they still made them. Like you could bring them at, bring them back, make I them make them bimbo core again. <gasps> I'm going to do it. The minute this episode drops, you're going to see me with a bump it in. Mm -hmm. You're going to be like, lives were changed. New era. New era. She's mm -hmm. a new girl with the bump it. Yeah. Sponsored by Bumpets. And make sure to buy Chrissy's new album, Bump It Up, on Am now available on iTunes. I almost said HBO Max. On like HBO the Max, the documentary. <laughs> yeah, it's a documentary around these. <laughs> Me and my Bump It Up session. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, new era. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. But yeah, th well, that's the end of our time. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. But Chrissy, where can people find you? Do you have any like tours, shows coming up, social medias? Obviously, they're probably already following you on TikTok, but where else can they find you? Oh my God. Well, you'll find me at TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all those things. Chrissy Shapeka. And I have a show coming up in New York, uh, September 19th at Elsewhere. So catch me there. I'll be headlining it. Um, in October, I'm at Subculture, and we've got some more stuff on the way that I can't tell you about yet, but just know there are announcements coming, so. But yeah, that is the end of our time today. Uh, join us next time whenever we have somebody else. Bye. And until then, bye guys. Bye. <laughs>